journey down the rabbit hole of rock and roll's past, present, and future. It's Barstool Rockers with your hosts, Jim Finn and Dan Michaels. When your boss is the boss. Yes. And you have downtime because the boss is off doing other things like going to Broadway, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Is there a bat phone? It's like the boss phone that when he calls, you got to answer it? Or how does that work? I don't know. I know that with uh, Prince talking to one of the guys from the Hornheads, he was very much a guy where he would call at 3 a.m. and you were expected to be there. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if Springsteen's that way or not. Or if the boss is Tony Soprano and you get the call at 3 a.m., of course, you take that call. Yes, you have to take that call. Especially if you're a made man. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be sleeping with the fishes. Of course, we are getting ready to talk to uh, Silvio Dante himself, little Steven Van Zandt. Good morning. How's everybody? We're doing good. Little Steven and the All Disciples right. of Soul, you've cooked up a new album for us, Summer of Sorcery which is going to be out on May 3rd. Oh, Stephen Van Zant, thanks for talking to us today. Look at that album cover. That kind of reminds me of those uh, cool album covers from the 70s that uh, Frank Frazetta and Roger Dean did, Summer of Sorcery. That that album cover is pretty sweet. Exactly. That is that is Frazetta uh, inspired for sure. Yeah. I love Frank Frazetta. I, I grew up with him on my Conan the Barbarian covers of the, of the books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you those- know? Those so I've been beautiful. a big fan of his ever since. Now, you talk about building this as a theme. A lot of bands today work on singles. That seems to be the thing of the day. But you're still giving people an entire package. You're giving them a theme project. Yeah, yeah I just, you know, that's what I grew up with. And I, and I just, you know, I fell in love with the whole idea of concept albums. I just have always done that. I've, ne- I've never done an album that wasn't, uh, you know, thematic uh, with, with a concept. Uh, I, just don't, I just don't understand, you know, a, a collection of songs. It doesn't mean very much to me, but I, I like something that adds up to uh, something greater than, than just, a, just a collection, you know. Uh, so in this case, you know, so it's a broad theme, you know, because you know, all, all my things in the past, all my records in the past were very autobiographical and, and very political. I really wanted to get away from that this time. I, I wanted it to be like, you know, 10 little movies, 12 little, 12 little movies, and, uh, and um, you know, fictionalized, you know, so I could be different characters in each one. Under that broad, you know, theme of, of summer, that first summer of consciousness, that summer of where you first fall in love with life and, you know, that thrill of unlimited possibilities yeah. and, and those expectations, those, you know, romantic kind of fantasy of, of, of what life can bring you. And, uh, you know, and it's always, I think it's always there because you never quite, you never quite reach it, right? You never quite get there. So <laughs> it's always just below the surface. And uh, I want to recapture that right now because I think we need a little, we need a little bit of hope, you know, we need a little, you know, positive, positive vibes right now, you know what I mean? We just, we've never been more divided, and I've never seen so much negative energy in my life all around us, so I want to inject a little positive energy into the mix here, and that's what we do live, man, you know, we don't get into partisan politics, we're like, we're, we're sanctuary from, from all that. You know? that's, that's very cool. So we, 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 we transport people for two hours away from the madness to this blissful place of pure, pure music. <laughs> you know, with the best band you're ever going to see in your life. And, you know, and, and, and we kind of wanted to capture that on, on the album also. Well, and for a lot of us that grew up through when, when music was great, and I'm not saying music isn't great now, but there was a time when it was just the soundtrack of our lives and built the memories. I can remember Memorial Day as a kid being, you know, when you hear on Memorial Day weekend, the beat goes on switching to glide, things like that. And it's just... It's a great feeling to have those musical uh, touchstones, if you will, to remember points in time. And summer is definitely all about that. Yeah, that's right. It's something you tend to remember. And, and, and that's the reason why you remember it, because, you know, it's all part of that real primal rites of spring. And you know, it goes back, you know, thousands of years, you know, I think, in our DNA that, you know, the, the earth blooms and comes alive, you know, and, and, and the same thing happens to us, you know, we have that same feeling of renewal and rebirth, you know, and I think that's that's something that just never goes away. That's awesome. Steven, you're going to be taking this album out on the road, performing it live for us, which is some really, really good news, and I think we all could use a little good news now. You're going to wrap up the remaining Soulfire tour dates 
in the land down under on April 18th. And then you're going to go out on a world tour, which is going to kick off in the birthplace of the Beatles, May 16th in Liverpool. Yeah, I love that town. And, you know, rock and roll is my religion, so so that's my mm-hmm. mecca. And uh, I really, uh, I always return there. And uh, uh, we, we, we really had some fun last tour. We, we did a... We, we did, you know, the Beatles used to do lunchtime sessions at the Cavern Club, uh, where, where the local business people would come in with their lunch, and, and literally, and the Beatles would play for half an hour during lunchtime, and that's how they got discovered by their manager, Brian Epstein. And so we did that. We, we did, a, we did a, I think it's the first lunchtime set since the Beatles left. Uh, we, actually, we actually did one of those and captured it on the, on the vinyl box set that we just put out, the Soul Fire Live vinyl. It's like seven seven album vinyl box set and the seventh album is the cavern show oh, sweet so uh we're able to capture that and it's on the blu-ray also now the soul fire teacher solidarity tour which was a great project to support teach rock which is a national initiative to bring music curriculum into schools across the country can you tell us about that a little bit more about that and your involvement in it yeah, yeah. Basically, you know, uh, the, the No Child Left Behind legislation of ten years ago devastated all the arts classes in America. They just, they just said, you know, we got to do this math and science testing. Forget about the arts, which was just a tragedy. It's ridiculous. So we were trying to figure out how to get the arts back in, and uh, so we decided let's let's do it through a music history curriculum. This way, you know, and we'll and we'll provide it for free, so there's no budget problem. And um, basically, we will. Um, I outlined like 200 lessons of the entire history of music, you know, back to the early you know, 20th century, and 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 then uh, we also uh, partnered with various documentary people. You know, we we partnered with the Beatles last year for the Ron Howard you know, film, and cool. uh, and the uh, you know the Rumble people uh, for the for the Link Ray uh, American Indian uh, documentary, and you know, so we you know we basically keep things up to date with the documentaries, and at the same time we. Uh, we have uh, created a methodology for the modern world because these kids are smarter than us, they're faster than us, yeah. and they have no patience. Yeah. So we've had to find a way to help teachers get their attention. And, and so we designed this thing for that. You know, we're designing it for the kid that's, that's going to drop out of school, okay, because we want, we want to start affecting the dropout rate, which is epidemic. Yeah. So in order to do that, you've got to get their attention and you've got to keep it. And the way to do that is through music. They're all into music. They love it. And, you know, so you start with, like, who's your favorite artist? And they all have one. And you say, okay, let's trace them back. You know, whoever it is. You know, if it's Ariana Grande. Okay, she comes from this one. That one comes from that one. Then she comes from uh, Rita Franklin. And, by the way, she's from Detroit. Let's talk about Detroit. Let's talk about gospel church. Let's talk about civil rights. And, you know, before you know it, the kids are completely engaged, and they're learning history without even knowing it. And it's working, man. It's working. And uh, we, um, you know, we're going to continue that this tour, you know. Uh, we put aside four or 500 tickets for teachers to come for free. Awesome. That's, uh, they, they all that's admirable. Uh, register with Christine at teachrock.org, and they can bring a friend. And uh, all of that's for free. We do a workshop for free for them. And it's working, man. We got, we got 25,000 teachers registered right now, and we just went public with it on the last tour. That was it. So we're hoping to double that this year. And they all teach about 100 kids each. So we're reaching 2.5 million kids right now. And I want to double that this year if we can. And uh, that's all, you know, that's all been going very, very well. That's admirable. That's very admirable. I wish more musicians would do things like that. Okay, I got a break from talking about music here. And this is probably my most important and pressing question of the day. Will Silvio Dante be appearing in the Sopranos prequel. Is he? Is, <laughs> are, they, are they tapping you to play a part in that or not? No, it's a prequel. It's a prequel by you know thirty years before us. So. Well, you could be a grandfather. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stephen, on behalf uh, of no. on on of all of us here, uh, all my friends and colleagues, man, congratulations, dude! You were awesome on both the Sopranos and Lily Hammer. So. Thumbs up, and we really look forward to the new album, Summer of Sorcery, which is going to be out on May 3rd. Little Stephen and the Disciples of Soul. Stephen Van Zandt, thanks for taking time to talk with us today. Thank you, my friend. My pleasure. Thank you. I think he should have been in the prequel, and I, I, I'm hoping that they come up with a part for him, because he could play. Well, sure. One of the elders. Yeah. 
of his character. So it'd, be, it'd just be perfection. He kind of shrugged it off, though. I know, but, I know. He didn't really see it like uh, I did. So. That's too bad, because oh, he well, was phenomenal. He that. was. He was a great... He was fun on the show. He had that... that vibe to him and it was it was just great you know and i wonder you know sopranos at that point in time was kind of like game of thrones now so it, yeah. it was that scheduled watching mm-hmm. thing you know and you mm-hmm. always and that's little steven it's kind of cool because we got to interview little steven van zant the musician as well as the guy from the sopranos <laughs> so you know done so, yeah so that's cool Anyway, we do want to thank y'all for listening today. If you get an opportunity, stop over to the website, barstoolrockers.com. You can check out the other episodes there up on the Episodes tab. You can also click on the Subscribe tab and find out the myriad of places that you can subscribe to the podcast, such as iTunes, uh, Spotify, the iHeartRadio app, and more. We do want to extend our thanks to Anastasia Vizhnevsky for the music that you are listening to right now, our intro music, and we want to uh, thank you all for listening. Don't rush me, sunshine. Jesus, do you ever shut the f*** up?